Hello traders and welcome to the weekly outlook and setups volume 145. It's Ilya here and as always I'm really grateful to have you on the channel which had birthday yesterday on the 15th of April 2019 was when the this YouTube channel was opened the trading fanatic and I think around that time I also posted my weekly outlook and setups volume 1 which was pretty much just a way for me to keep track of my weekly analysis and then to see how the week played out and just to keep more like an accountancy for me right but it has turned into something amazing that I really never expected so I want to thank you for all the support, for all the comments, for all the likes and for all of you tuning in to analyze together and to kill the charts. So happy birthday to the channel, first of all. And uh, yeah, so this week has been kind of tricky. I'm having a losing week this one. I traded uh, on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. I had uh, and I took two uh, few trades, so it was kind of tricky for me, right? I think Monday and Tuesday were great, uh, but I was also distracted a little bit with other things. I took a, only one loss on Monday, then I took kind of a break even on Tuesday, and then I took a loss on Wednesday, so that's pretty much it. I didn't trade much um, because I mainly trade on EU and this pair was slightly bit tricky this week. Hopefully I'm not alone. But uh, yeah, let me know in the comments how you performed this week and uh, let's head into the video. But before we do that, make sure you are subscribed and turn on the notification bell because I post these weekly outlook and setups every Saturday and once per week I give my best to, sh to publish an educational piece of content or a trading setups breakdown video to provide more value, of course. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's head into it. All right, let's get started with the dollar. So we had, again, quite a few economic releases and developments this week, but we can overall see, uh, as I told you last week, that the overall sentiment of the dollar is bullish due to many reasons that I covered in the, in the last videos. Uh, but yes, the first target actually uh, for me that was mentioned, I do believe, in the last outlook was um, 150. So we pretty much tapped this one. And this zone was originated above this high, which is where I was pretty much targeting. And uh, also the targets on EU fulfilled, everything was fulfilled, but the overall development of price was not really nice, right? So just starting from the weekly time frame, I'm trying to find my the horizontal ray. There it is. So pretty much my next target is this high right there, which is around 101. So this is where I think the market is going to reach out to grab more liquidity. And again, once again, we are having another bullish candle, which is pretty nice. So the last one was a pure engulfing candle with a little wick on top. Uh, but you can see that we did not even pull back this week. So this week we opened, we created a very little pullback, which was not really significant. If I just measured the pips, right, it was like 30 pips, but the, the pip range in the DXY is slightly bit different. And right now we are headed into the highs. We just took out 150 and you can see we kind of rejected and closed exactly at that level right there. So again, uh, the biggest question is, are we going to have a continuation right now? Right now, I do think that is definitely possible because the market is probably seeking right now to attack some sort of a high. It's probably not going to stop into a level like this. Well, of course, could be. But what I expect in terms of the weekly is for the market to open, hopefully maybe to give us a little bit of a pullback to the downside to create the wick and then to potentially expand to the upside and attack uh, 101. Right, so the candle is gonna look something like this, right? Okay, this is maybe make it blue like that. So this is how I imagine next week to look like. I am still bullish, right? But of course, opening my mind to, to of course, the bearish scenario. And as you can see, if we just have a look at the overall uh, development of, of the week on the daily, we were kind of uh, in this very big push phase right at a higher high. And so probably I expected for the market to pull back, right? We had this beautiful shooting star right there. But as you can see, it's not all about candles. It's just following the market. Because what happened is Monday we opened. We kind of manipulated into the downside. We closed bullish. Tuesday was bullish. Then Wednesday was we had a little bit of a sell-off. Thursday was pretty big because we had some news. And then Friday was, of course, uh, Easter. Happy Easter, by the way, for those uh, celebrating. So nothing too much to extract on the daily. Except, of course, the fact that we are heavily extended right now. We are in a massive push phase and yeah, the market will have to reprice at some uh, point of time. But uh, yeah, look, look at that. If I just remove uh, this price action is not very nice. Right there, right? So pretty much this is where we opened 11th. We had a wick down push. I had this level marked right there. So I was overall looking for longs uh, as long as we stay above this level. But we actually had a tap inside uh, Asia. 
right there. And I thought, okay, cool, this level is retested right now. We're having some bullish pressure. And I thought we're straight going to continue pumping into the highs. And this is why I took, a, I think, yeah, I took a short on, on, on EU very early on. But actually, then later, EU went further into the upside, which was this retest right there. It went for a little bit of a liquidity grab. And then we started to continue higher right so of course the next day we can we can attack this guy now which is the new higher low which the break of structure was not very nice but it is what it is it had a very nice manipulation into the lows push into the highs again then it came all the way down to collect all of these flat price right there and probably tapped deeper into this zone and then we had a very nice explosion right there during the news and then we just consolidated it all right so currently the last break of structure is this and uh, what I will be looking for is, again, as I said, for some sort of a pullback. If I just drop my full hourly range, which is my main time frame, well, I will be looking for a pullback towards the 50%. There is not a clear zone that I see that we can trade from, uh, honestly. Uh, we're just ranging right now, right there during um, Easter. So, uh, again, I don't have a zone to mention, for example, that I want to see price come in right there. Well, pretty much this one will be it. This sort of sell, then a very big buy right there. So we had a drop, little base credit, and then a massive expansion into the highs. So, of course, I will be looking for any sort of pullback on the DXY to the downside. And it can just even respect the 50%. And then if it starts to turn on the lower time frames, then I'm going to be looking for longs. Uh, but of course, preferably, uh, maybe we can even take a short, then down into this level. And then from there, I'm going to be looking for the shift and again, attacking 101. So this is pretty much my outlook. Nothing too much to mention at, at this point. We're having this last push into the highs. So if we just continue going with the trend, which is bullish, this is our last higher low. So as long as we remain above it, we should be bullish. So for next week, especially like Monday and Tuesday, I will be looking for a pullback to the downside and then potential continuation. And again, the other scenario will be for us to just spike into the highs. And if we first take 101, uh, then I will be just observing to see if we can have continuations to the upside, something like this, or if we're going to have a complete reversal. Because usually after the market takes out levels like this, it might initiate a big daily pullback, all right? Because 101 is a very big kind of weekly zone, right? This is this last high. And then, yeah, potentially we can start tapping into zones like this which we can look at. So for example, this is a very nice, huge daily slash weekly zone, right? This is, but this is on the hourly. So we can take out all of these highs, maybe tap into kind of 101, 200, let's say, and then we can initiate a very big pullback on the daily, right? So this is my overall outlook on the DXY. Let's see how it plays out overall bullish so far, but of course being mindful as we start tapping those levels that we can have a little bit of a retracement. Let's have a look at EURUSD. We're going to have an outlook first and then I'm going to show you my trades and what I learned from that. But before we do that, make sure to check out my favorite broker, CedarForex.com. It is amazing. It has a lot of instruments to trade and it has two types of accounts, right? They have the eco account, which is um, with commissions and they have the commission free account. But I picked their eco account because for every single lot that you trade, it goes towards planting 10 trees. Go and explore their website. It's down in the description and see how many trees they have planted and check out their spreads. I think they are pretty, pretty, pretty good. So make sure to check them out. Link is down in the description. So let's actually have a look at EU right now. Uh, we are again in this overall push phase to the downside on the weekly. We had a very nice pullback. And again, the first target that we were looking for is this low, which pretty much again got fulfilled uh, as soon as uh, the Dixie tapped uh, 150. This one also tapped uh, a 1.08 and uh, they pretty much kind of worked together this week, which was which was pretty nice. But again, the development man on this one was very tricky. I had a big big difficulties with EU this this week but pretty much right now on the weekly this is the major 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 lower high and we are definitely bearish right so we had this very sharp push into the highs right now we have been trading to the downside for quite a while we just took out this low and as you can see we are starting to slow down again we can even see it on the daily right there it started to slow down move down move up big quick right there so it's starting to kind of accumulate a little bit right there it's probably either waiting for for a bigger pullback right or it's either just consolidating before it initiates lower again i don't know and we can never know right as for the left right now the next target will be of course this low right which is 106 um definitely a lot of space to travel towards this one kind of 200 uh, 2000 pips is it 2200 i don't know 
doesn't matter. Uh, but yeah, so let's drop to the four hourly time frame. Nothing too much to extract on the daily again, right? So we started with a little bit of a push into the highs. The market went down, but it kind of gave that retest two times. We're going to see it retested the high two times. Uh, very nice day, bearish day right there on Tuesday, which I think was the best day to trade. But unfortunately, I I think I got that break even on that day. Wednesday was bullish, and then Thursday was just a madness. Very big week day. It was the oh I, I remember right now. It was the ECB interest rate and deposit rate decision and press conference for the ECB. So that really shook the market. And then of course the Good Friday right there. Nothing too much happened. So dropping onto the 4H again. Yeah, you can see. It's kind of nice, right? But we have a lot of wicks right now. So this is one of the wicks that I was looking to take a short from. And as you can see, it actually tapped inside Asia. And I thought, okay, so it has went to retest this, uh, this lower high. So I'm actually ready to short, right? So I tried to short somewhere right there, which actually provided a beautiful long opportunity. But again, at that time, then I, of course, saw other people taking a long. And I was like, oh, how can I be so stupid not to see this long? But again, guys... Every single morning, it's different. You might do your analysis and you see longs. Well, just take the longs, right? Or, or the shorts. And then you see somebody else has gone short. You don't know if he has taken this trade as well, right? Uh, so just stick to your analysis. If you thought that this morning the market is going short, you just take your short. And if it goes long, you are just wrong in your narrative. And that's fine. What really matters is that you execute your plan, right? So what happened is then we actually went for a very nice deeper tap inside this one. We liquidity grabbed above this high, which was kind of a high that was created during Asia. And then this one created a new zone. So as you can see, we overall retained this bearish flow, right? But again, the overall development right there, I just couldn't read it this week, right? So if I am to break down everything right now again, very similar to the DXY, we had this massive run into the downside, right? That was initiated by this overall zone. So if we continue to... Uh, retest and respect the lower highs, I definitely think we're bearish, right? So right now, of course, we have this big range push. Right now, the market is consolidating at the bottom. So, of course, what I would love to see on EU right now is a push into the highs, preferably into this zone. That would be great. And then, of course, a shift on the lower time frames and then potentially attacking, yeah, first of all, this low. Um, or even just a 50% pullback is enough for me to drop to lower time frames and start looking for short because we know that EU does not pull back very deeply most of the times, right? Um, recently it has done, right? It always comes to retest ve the very extremes of the lower highs. And then, of course, the third case, which I'm, I wouldn't love, is for the market to continue pushing lower. And if it does, then what we have to do is just follow the flow and keep shorting. But then if it really starts to reverse from here and start breaking structure, then we also have to adapt and start looking for longs. But there are the overall three outlooks that I would love to see on Monday. So again, guys, make sure to stay tuned for my Tuesday analysis on Telegram, where we're going to have a look what happens and how we can adapt. But pretty simple analysis. Everything is bearish right now. We have a beautiful push to the downside. Uh, right now, the market is just chopping around. So let it shake this consolidation a little bit and then see if we can continue. So let's let's have a look at the trades. I'm going to be quick not to lose too much time because they are actually not a lot. So on Monday, again, you can see... Um, as I told you, we had this wick into this zone, so I thought the market is ready, right? We pushed down, we kind of reacted from this demand right there, reacted, but then it failed to break hard, and then we had this guy right there. So again, looking at it on the hourly, it really looks like a liquidity grab and a liquidity grab below Asia, but at that time, I didn't perceive it like this, right? So that was the problem, because if I dropped to the 15 minute again, so I was looking, okay, so there is this big manipulation. I really didn't think the market is going to go above this one at that time, right? But then after I saw, so the market, there was this supply, the market responded from supply, then massively broke. So pretty much this higher low, this was a higher low right there. So as long as this one was intact, right, we were bullish. And this was my mistake, right? So we have a very big push. Everything right there is corrective. As long as we stay above, we are bullish. And where is our target? The higher high, right? So this is what I uh, mistook. I thought, okay, we're starting to build a bearish flow. The market actually tapped inside right there with a beautiful buy. And then it sold off. It didn't even break structure, right? But at that moment, I thought sales, so I took sales. And this is how they looked like. I first wait to see the reaction from this zone, which was the new kind of 15 minute zone. We had a tap inside, we reacted, we were still bullish on the one minute. We went for a little bit of a liquidity grab and then we flipped to the downside. So we broke the last higher low. And then on the retest of this lower high, I entered and I just got slapped on this one. 
And then, of course, th there is the, the, the actual setup that we should have taken. But, of course, I didn't see at that moment. We had the manipulation below the Asian low, a tap inside this very strong demand zone, as we discussed. And then, of course, you can see that this was the push. This was a lower high. The market then fails to make a new lower low. So we have the shift. And there we have the break right and then pretty much the market did this fun stuff and went all the way back down to retest this zone so again it's debatable um a lot of the guys that shared the tight stop losses so they would have looked for something like this which would have been triggered but then i see for example people done this okay could be right two pip stop loss doesn't look that bad so this is pretty much the trade that i later saw from other people and yeah this one would have been very nice if you actually wrote it into the highs but yeah, I took the short, so that was my last one on uh, Monday. And then, of course, uh, for New York session, I didn't trade. I, I was slightly bit busy this week, uh, but pretty much some shorts could have been taken right there. I'm, I'm definitely going to backtest this one on the weekend right now. But this is this is my first trade on Monday, so started with a little bit of a loss, which is, which is fine. And uh, then on Tuesday, it was, again, tricky because I was thinking, okay, so are we bullish or bearish right now? But again, after I saw the market getting in deeper right there, and then shifting the structure again, I was like, okay, cool, we are going short right now. Uh, we had this very extreme demand that actually broke structure. It caused the market to shift higher. So I was aware of this, but I was also short biased, right? So I didn't expect this right there again, some sort of news, very massive run into the highs, and then it just dropped. And I was trying to short right there on the overall downtrend. So if we drop to the 15 minute, maybe delete some price. I was seeing how, so there is my loss yesterday, there is that big push into the highs, then we started shifting lower, and you can see how the lower highs are respected, lower highs right there, lower highs right there, lower highs right there, everything is very nice lower highs, so it looks pretty, pretty, pretty good, and of course, the last one was this, so we had a very sharp move into the lows, and uh, I was looking for a tap of, si of this one, but as I told you, EU loves to pull back just above 50% and then start reversing. So as soon as I start started spotting the, the reversal from right there, I went for it, right? Uh, but yeah, as you can see, it did not even reach like my, my first targets right there. <clears throat> I was just looking to see this low getting taken and the potential to take some partials at 4R. Uh, but yeah, it just pushed right there. It did not reach. Then it went for my stop loss, which was reduced. Uh, went in again, uh, but then it started kind of, you can see it still gives you shorts, but then it kind of just goes for a liquidity gap, another liquidity gap, massive expansion higher. Then you, you start looking at it. Okay. So are we bullish right now? But then it just kind of shifts and uh, goes lower. So very kind of tricky price this week. Of course. Yeah. You can definitely zoom in and understand better, but personally I couldn't this week. So there is my overall trade, overall uptrend, we tapped inside, we started shifting. Um, I took this trade a little bit too late, honestly, uh, because I saw the shift even from here. So I was thinking to take this guy, but I was like, okay, we, we're still above this major demand. As this demand broke, I got ready. So on the retest, I took it from there. I also kept a bigger stop. So if my stop loss was smaller, um, I would have taken, yeah, I, I would have even hit full TP, right? Because I... I always take like 80% of 5R, but again, always to improve, right? Always to improve. Why did I place the stop loss like that? I don't know. I was probably stressed, wanted to be safe. And then the market rolled to the downside. So I rolled my stop above this high and uh, yeah, it just hit me. So that was a, yeah, a quarter of a loss or something. And uh, yeah, then it kind of started doing this fun stuff, right? This fun stuff right there, massive expansion into the highs. And then, of course, if you really perceive this as kind of a manipulation, we kind of shifted to the downside. Um, and we had this overall range. So the market pulled back again, as you can see, above 50%. And then it shifted from there. So I do think some shorts could have been taken from here, which would have been lovely. Right, so that is a trade that I that I probably missed. I didn't see at all that time. And there is another one at six o'clock. This one is probably at five, which is the time that I don't trade. But yeah, it happens. So this is my Tuesday with a quarter of a loss. And then Wednesday, man, another loss, freaking losing streak. But it is what it is. Let's have a look at Wednesday. Is that it? Yeah, I think so. Um, what is Wednesday? Let's see. Wowly kind of forgot yeah so we were trading at this low right now but again as long as i'm bearish i am bearish i didn't expect this massive run into the highs right so i kept shorting dropping onto the 15 minute to delete some price um yeah this one was tricky again so we had this kind of low very major low credit and then the asian range was super expanded to the upside and we were really extended down so i thought hmm we might be initiating a pullback to the upside 
But then I saw the development, so we manipulated above the Asian high, and then we had this very nice push to the downside, right? So I thought, okay, so we are definitely bearish. So what I looked for is to is to trade from this lower high right there, and this is what I did, right? But let's see what happened. So so there is the lower high, there is the market tapping inside, and man, this was developing really choppily, right? Um, Again, creating higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. There, there is probably the first break. I was thinking to put a short right there. I think some of my community members were taking shorts from there. But again, I'm not that aggressive. And I think sometimes you got to be a bit more aggressive. Because if I took this trade from there, for example, as I was seeing it, there is your 5R, right? And you're done. Uh, but then I saw this break of stock and I was like, okay, we go. So what I do next? I wait for to, to take it from there. But get, guess what? I, I didn't take it. I was ready to to with my finger uh but i just somehow did not it came in very sharply and i was kind of a bit emotional two losses not really understanding the market well so i was looking for something more and uh, yeah again guys emotions even the best traders out there have them and i don't pretend to be the best by the way there is this lower high that pushed i was like bro you have to get in right you have to get in so on the retest i got him stop loss not very nicely placed above this high because then this high became uh liquidity and it was liquidity grabbed right so yeah, what I did again, emotional, we had a reaction, push into the highs, almost got stopped, push into the lows, almost got stopped, and on the third move, I closed the break even, right? And this trade could have plummeted from there, so I accepted my mistake, but I was getting aware that we were building also the liquidity for us to, to catch it from the top, but then I didn't trade because this was 10.56 and at 11 o'clock I stopped trading usually, so I was like, just let it consolidate, this shitty pair. And even if it was taken again, depending on the stop loss, I had some members taking it from, from here, for example, with a very tight stop again. And you, you you make the R, right? So within this this push and this push, you could have made the R, but I was trading with slightly bigger stop loss at that time, so I couldn't. And uh, yeah, then of course, the rest of the development, I did not trade as I was busy during New York this week. So this is those are pretty much my trades, guys. Uh, it, the, those are two full losses and one quarter of a loss, So and I risk... Uh, 0.50%, so that is about uh, percent around 40 maybe with, with commission. So that is EU. Uh, those are the trades. Hopefully you extracted something. Hopefully you're going to go and examine and learn from those uh, mistakes. Right now, let's carry on. Looking at Euro Yen, again, it's a JPY pair, and we know that those for a couple of weeks have been extremely expanding. Um, we're having a straight bullish week, right? So no week to the downside. We just opened, boom, straight bullish and just a little bit of a rejection right there. That probably happened on Friday. Um, still, we are contained within this inside bar, right? So we had the previous week, which was an inside bar. And we can, of course, expect either the high or the low of the mother candle to be attacked. And right now, looking at the bullishness, I do think this high is probably going to get taken because this is where the liquidity right lies right now. But of course, we never know, right? Dropping onto the daily, we are still contained uh, with this demand right there. So this is kind of the last higher low. And I told you, if you want a short, wait for this one to break. It did not break, right? 8th of April, big bullish day. And then since then, we pretty much chopped around, as you can see, which is probably going to be clear on the foliage. Yeah, there we go. So... Uh, nothing too much to mention on this one, guys. And if you want my analysis, well, there it is, bro. This is a range, right? So nothing too much to do <laughs> inside this range. Um, again, just looking at it again at the weekly, in order for this market to move somewhere, it has to create some sort of manipulation. I do think the high is a great place to go for, right? Uh, currently, the most recent range is this push. So we pulled back below 50%, which is great. There was that little candle right there. If you want to look in between the, the lines... Uh, but again, we have a big consolidation and right now we have a little consolidation right there, right? And probably if I start dropping even lower, you're going to see little ones, liquidity grab, little ones, probably liquidity grab again. So my biggest tip on this one is to wait, right? So if you trade EJ, uh, my biggest tip on this one is to wait. So wait for it to probably get the high, then start shifting lower if it's going to go bearish or just wait for a push, pull back and then continue going with it. Because currently, I really don't think you should be trading, especially... Uh, within this range um, but yeah we're kind of overall right now in, in the short zone which is above the 25 so you can look for shorts but uh, we know that this high is definitely going to get taken because we have kind of these two highs right now then these right there right so this is all building the flat highs in order for them to get smashed right so I'm gonna leave it here 
overall bullish right now i just don't see where you can take the longs if we start with a big pump to the downside and uh, i think you can take a long from right there uh, if we start with a big pump into the highs then of course it's all about just waiting to see what's gonna happen all right so that's ej nothing too much on this one let's have a look at the aussies this week they were not that bad we can see an overall continuation lower after this very big spike on the aussie that was caused by the rate their rate decision and press conference as well so again still looking at the weekly i do perceive this one to still be the range and i can just drop like this higher low on the week right now then transfer onto the daily and uh, yeah currently we were reacting from this little kind of a rally based rally which is kind of a demand you see we tapped reacted tapped again reacted tapped again reacted but it seems like this one is definitely about to break and we opened on the 11th straight bearishness big push then again indecision bearishness inside bar and then on friday we just took out the low right so you can see although we have this bearish week it was not entirely bearish right so we can see first we started to very slowly roll down we had a massive expansion higher then again lower taking this low then again higher right but then we respected this guy right there and right now we're headed lower and we already kind of took out this low right so looking at how it's respecting the highs even if we trail it back to this guy which was slightly bit liquidity grab we are overall bearish right and just looking at how this demand is not holding i do think this one is breaking and we're heading lower right uh, then the question is how can we trade this one well we have to ask okay where is our last higher low uh, sorry lower high it's this one right so if i have any pullbacks towards this zone i will be interested to take shorts heading lower uh and if we start expanding to the downside like this then of course then the last lower high will be here and we're gonna take it from there right but this is when we have to adapt and probably check out the tuesday morning outlook um <clears throat> yeah as for opportunities i do think there were some right uh, but again, overall kind of a tricky one, right? We started very slowly down, then we had this very big spike into the highs. Uh, then you can see the 50 minute shifted from here. So then I think you could have shorted from right there, which was again kind of during Asia, then it started rolling down. Then it returned back to the same area, so you should be looking for short somewhere right there, which was kind of a little bit of a choppy. Then we continue going lower. So definitely think that there were opportunities on the AU, but it was kind of tricky as well. But overall, this is my outlook. So looking for shorts and probably nothing too much to say on AJ. Why is my analysis still there? Let's delete it. But yeah, pretty much what was I looking on Tuesday? Let's see. Yeah, okay. I was looking for longs, which, which, which was nice. Played out. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, we since then, we haven't had much of a development, right? <clears throat> my voice is disappearing again. On the weekly, we're having another inside bar. So have a look. So this is inside. And... Uh, this one is also inside right now so definitely stacking definitely consolidating so again what's my biggest tip is to step aside and wait for it to develop because yes oh man my voice is going out um we can try to figure out we can try to figure out where this one wants to go but knowing that we are within this range then it's not very high probability to trade right the most recent hourly price was uh higher low i mean was this one but right now we're just chopping around we also have this sort of supply right there so what is the market doing right now it is just stuck right it's just stuck between this so my analysis is just wait for something to happen right wait for the highs to be taken i think we're currently kind of accumulating we're distributing at the top so we can have like a sharp spike and then we can start rolling down uh but yeah just wait for it right just wait for it i have no analysis on this one simply because it's not clear yes it's overall bullish but then where do you long from right because we're just ranging so give it some time don't stress and uh yeah the NZD actually looks a little bit more bearish than the Aussie, right? We had a beautiful wick into the highs and then this one just very nicely pushed into the lows. And right now, actually, it's tapping into this last um, frontier of demand. So let's see if it's actually going to respect. I don't think so. Reacted, responded. It's already kind of gotten the response. So I do think this one is probably going to break and this bear is about to turn bearish. But we can see that on the 11th, we were kind of a little bearish. Then Tuesday, pullback. Then Wednesday, a very bigger pullback right there. Manipulation into the highs. And then we just uh, rolled very slowly to the downside. And of course, the first target will be this low. Because, because yeah, this is the inside bar. Uh, this is the mother candle. We have inside bar. Another one right now. So this is definitely the first one to take. Again, if we take this one, can we reverse higher from this major demand? Um, 
I don't think so. We really grabbed a lot from here already. So not sure if there is any left. Uh, but it's definitely possible. But we can see there is a very nasty spike right there. Uh, the market pulled back right now. It's on the way towards making a new lower low. So in terms of opportunities, um, I would have loved to short from here. But the market already pulled back. It looks like this one could be a potential lower high. So if we break, then wait for this one to tap and short. Yeah, pretty much that's it. Um, also open for the longs from this zone, but I just don't think so. Looking at how the market develops, massive sellers, right? There are very little pullback and then just continues to roll to the downside without any buyers, right? So I do think we can have a liquidation of this low. Then the market can initiate a push higher, right? But this push higher is just going to be a pullback for a new lower high. So this is my outlook for now. Nothing too much to mention. This one is also possible to be traded from because it's very nice uh, wick that grabbed liquidity above the previous high. Very nice to broke structure to the downside. So pretty much this this is our this is our major leg, right? This is just complex. So we can even do something like this right now, right? So be open. I'm short bias on this pair. Let's see how it plays, right? Wait for Monday to develop, and then of course I'm not gonna even waste time on this one. Uh, because, yeah, another kind of weekly wick. Grab the previous weekly candle, but we're still contained within the, the inside bar right there. Daily, yeah, push up, up, down, then two choppy days. Four hourly, just a range, right? It's just a range. Um, yeah, we can, of course, drop this as the last higher low, which is not even a higher low. Uh, then, of course, the market response probably from this sort of wick right there we can see and right now we're just taking the range right so again uh the jpys aj ej and nj just give them some time all right that's it wow just look at that another massive bullish engulfing candle on uj this doesn't have a stop and uh, you can see, though, we just covered all the JPYs and they're kind of in this range. And this is because the other pairs are also getting weak, right? So the Euro is getting weak, the NZ is getting weak, the Aussie is getting weak. But then as the JPY is also so weak, those pairs just end up consolidating, right? So currently JPY pairs crosses like Euro Yen, uh, Aussie Yen, NZD Yen and all the other Yens are not very nice to trade, right? This one, though... Uh, yeah, hopefully some of you guys like a swing or positional traders are catching this one somehow. Uh, we had this last higher low that was respected, but this was way back then, uh, 31st of March. And then since then, we just rolled into the highs, right? So we opened straight move into the highs right there. Look at that 10th of April, little tap, massive expansion into the highs. Then, of course, this becomes our higher low. The market did not reach it fully. Another break of structure right there. Uh, then it went into the last higher low, respected. And another break of structure right there is just textbook, bro. Very nice. Um, yeah, so right now the new one is here. So we just keep following this kind of chain, right, of higher lows. Uh, this one, not really. So yeah, uh, what can I mention on this one? It's perfectly bullish. So if we have another pullback, then of course we can look for, for buys from here. And of course this one, it will come with a time when it has to fail and it has to reverse. But... I just don't know. We broke above this major high from 2015, right? And it's not giving us any sign for a potential reversal. So just keep longing, right? Just keep longing. This is an insanely very nice bullish market. Uh, so yeah, there is my analysis. As simple as that. Nothing too much more to mention. All right, let's have a look at the GBP starting from GU. So we can see that the weekly candle is, does not contain too much of an information. We took out the weekly low. We tried to take out the weekly high, which again signifies that we are overall bear, bearish. So we are currently reacting from this little demand right there. Um, but again, is this demand going to cause a full blown reversal all the way back up there? Uh, this is what we have to see right now, because you can see we're kind of a little bit chopping around right there so we had this daily push then actually the daily changed the structure right uh, but then we simply went inside this lower high right there reacted and right now we also took out the low but how did we take it with wicks only right we had this sharp expansion uh, one of the days which pretty much went inside this wick so right now again i am still bearish on this pair uh but again i'm also open for a slightly bigger pullback into the highs if I drop to the 4H, you can see that this one was not entirely clear this week as well. Of course, in the intraday timeframes, there are always opportunities uh, to take. But you can see we opened right there on the, where is it? On the 10th. 
massive push lower then we had this spike spike higher then chop 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 around push up push down then massive expansion into the highs tapping inside this high right there and then we started withdrawing lower right so i see a first liquidity grab second one then the third one right there and then a massive expansion into the highs which makes me think that this one right there could be a pretty significant zone this one right there so i will be mindful to see how gu is gonna react from here and uh, imagining kind of a situation even like this i don't want to because this market is purely bearish uh, but yeah currently we are just in the middle right we had a little bit of a shift right there so probably there is some sort of a level in the hour well not really uh but yeah this one could be another shorting level right they're just going with this um with pretending that this one is a lower high which is not uh but currently we are in the middle so the market can just go and grab a little bit of liquidity respect this one then head into the lows but i'm definitely curious how this level is going to respond right again keep in mind we're overall bearish we we had built in all of these flat highs right there there they are to the lows and to the highs very sharply took them out and right now very sharply reacting to the downside but where we currently are is in 50 percent of this range so this is not a good place to buy or sell so what I will be looking for on GU is uh, some more of a development, right? Where does it really want to go, right? And uh, I will be mindful when it comes right there. We'll be looking for something. And if it taps inside this one, I'm also going to start observing and see, uh, especially the 15 minute and the hour, how they're going to start adapting from right there. This is also 1.30, pretty major level that you can see we did not even... Yeah, we kind of closed below it, but we could not sustain below it. So maybe this is a very key zone that the market is going to reverse from, all right? So this is GU, it's not entirely clear, uh, but yeah, so definitely waiting for Monday to see how it's going to open and then just trying to flow with it. Uh, GJ, again, it's overall bullish, so you can see that it's uh, breaking structure into the highs right now on the daily. Very nice momentum pair right now into the highs. And uh, if I try to, to adapt to it, well, currently this one was the last kind of higher low pushed. It was already tapped, so right now this turns into the last one, and as long as we turn those higher lows... We should follow them right so there is the last one if we pull back towards it drop to a lower time frame wait for the shift and then just strike right um in terms of the weekly just a hard high i'm not gonna go on the left because right now we're getting into 2016 i'm not sure if if it's any kind of invaluable information that we can get yeah of course we can drop like a very big supply like this and uh, we can wait for it to tap but this one is gonna be pretty big so uh, yeah we're almost there so let's see if we tap like 168 170 you can see that is a very big supply so until we get there we, we have a lot of time and the market can just come in right there consolidate consolidate and then just start going down okay so currently as day traders we are bullish there is our last higher low so if we pull back right there then definitely looking to strike um can we have a deeper pullback well yeah probably but uh, as we start having deeper pullback then the forward is going to turn bearish so if the forward turns bearish then we start shorting until we're wrong and then we start going long right it's that simple and this is pretty much it gu and gj gu needs a little bit more time gu is definitely bullish and euro gbp is bearish so this means that the euro is weaker than the pound uh okay so that also means that the pound can reverse higher does it i don't know just dropping a couple of zones right there on this awful pair and uh yeah so we failed from this demand we went into the extremes right there right now we're just kind of initiating a pullback i just don't know of this pair but again it's overall bearish which suggests uh, a bearish no a bearish euro and a more stronger pound so let's see if we can pull back into any of those levels and uh, hold a, a lower high although this never does it just kind of does um volatile moves and then reverses so yeah but this is how i look into it but most importantly gj bullish and gu um overall bearish but i'm gonna give it some time to really see if it's gonna go down so stay tuned for my tuesday outlook on telegram gold is still sustaining that bullish pressure so if you remember last week we had an inside bar so this was the mother candle inside bar and we just crushed the high which is great and the dropping onto the daily we have also broken above this major lower high right there which was not really a lower high but if we count wix's breaks well we created this push lower we had a tap inside, tap inside, it failed to sustain, and then right now we have actually officially broken above it, which signifies that this um, the commodity is overall bullish, and if I try to find an overall daily higher low, it's going to be this overall range right there, 
And you can see that the push is not really momentous, right? So we don't really have a nice expansion into the highs. It's kind of little candles, little by little going up. So again, we can expect everything. You, if you also look on the left, like we are about to tap into these sort of ranges right there. So we can encounter some sort of supply as well. Uh, but yeah, overall, we have this push. We have this pullback in New York, which was a very nice long opportunity from this higher low. We pushed into the highs, took out the high. And right now we're just chopping around, right? So... I don't know about gold. It's kind of really sloppy as well right now. Uh, it's not really trending. It's a little bit hard for me to read. Uh, but yes, right now we are kind of in, still in the middle of this overall range. We're starting getting a little bit above 50%. So probably we're about to travel into the highs, right? But we can see that it's really indecisive, right? We can just see what price tells us. It's really indecisive as of right now. Because again, the gold right now, if interest rates are rising, people are more attracted to, to the DXY, but also due to inflation, some people put money into gold. So it's kind of a, a little bit of a conflict, which again results into this sort of price action. But I am overall bullish. So if we have a tap inside these lows, then of course we can start looking for a new shift to start going long. Uh, there is the last kind of hourly structure that we can respect. And we already kind of threw a little bit wick, a little bit of a wick into it. So if you maybe take out the wick and come in again, drop to lower time frame, look for longs. But then there is also the daily level that we can look from. And uh, yeah, I am kind of neutral on gold. I just don't know. I'm not also invested in it. I'm not training it. But um, I always listen to your feedback, guys. So I'm really curious to, to your uh, thoughts, maybe even a little bit of a fundamental outlook. Do you think that people are putting money into gold right now, which is going to increase the value and potentially attack a new hard high? Or do you think right this conflict between interest rates and uh, inflation is is uh how is it going to result on gold let me know in the comments i'm very curious let's have a look at some indices and cryptos so us 30 it's still bearish so we have this last weekly supply the market taps inside reacts 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 but what i also like about this one is that i'm seeing the bull the bulls trying to push wick wick down wick down wick down right always it tries to push higher but it always fails but i also see that there are people buying with these wicks which is really good which probably again means that we are in the need of a little bit of a pullback towards this zone right there for us to initiate a new leg higher right we can see again like a pullback push then taps tries to buy fails tries to buy again fails tries to buy again but it's overall creating also a bearish trend right but in terms of my overall analysis on the hard time frames, time frames, it still remains the same. This is my daily zone. I am still looking for this pullback towards it, and then I'm going to be buying, right? But currently on the 4H, you can see that we had this supply, respect it, uh, and uh, pushed lower to create a new lower low right here. And uh, then we pulled back towards the last lower high, which is here, respect it. And right now on market open, we can head for a new lower low as well, right? So this market is overall bearish, right? Right now. Uh, but overall, I would love to see a little bit of a dip right there to potentially then initiate higher. So this is my analysis. As long as we're kind of bearish on the 4H, keep shorting if you are intraday trading this one. Uh, NASDAQ, I have a couple of lines right there. So I think, um, yeah, these kind of are no longer needed because we're really extended to the downside right now. And we are about to tap into this overall weekly slash daily zone, right? On the weekly, we still held below this one, which means that we can even attack this low. And again, knowing that the tech stocks are slightly doing, some of them are really doing not that good. Uh, but I'm really curious to see how are we going to start responding as we're getting into the zone right now. That is very exciting times to see. But again, uh, currently on the hourly, we are just bearish, right? So we failed below this, this daily demand right there. Uh, break of structure, a little pullback, currently kind of consolidating. The most recent range is this one. So this is where potentially if we come inside, we can we can look for shorts. Uh, but I do think the market is already on its way to take out the low, which it actually just did by a pipette probably. Uh, but yes, I'm looking to see how, it start, how it's going to start entering this zone right there and how it's going to start reacting because potentially if we enter we can start changing the structure and hopefully see the stocks on a rise right so this is not that nasdaq still bullish but nothing too much to to share right there and also smp is nicely in this very nice pullback phase you can see how actually uh nicely flowing it is creating a little bit of a downtrend so hopefully it's gonna tap inside uh, here where my alert is waiting for my money to be deployed and uh yeah then to potentially see an upside what I like about this one is that it actually wicked above on the weekly and also it closed on the daily, which is a confirmation that potentially we can be turning bullish. Uh, but yes, still patiently waiting for the market. Oops. 
for the market to tap inside this zone right there, which is around 43. Um, and then from there, see the shift and then to potentially expand into the highs, right? Those companies are doing great. Some of the companies increasing value. Their valuations are also getting amazing because of that most recent drop. So uh, there are very kind of valuable in, in investments to be to be made at a discount. So I do think a lot of people are going to start buying right now. Of course, the, the intelligent investors and uh, this is potentially going to push the market up. So let's see, right? And then going on to crypto. Um, Again, let me complain a little bit. I didn't sell from right there. Right now running drawdown back into break even. Damn new crypto. That's what I don't like about it. Uh, but yeah, currently we have this range pullback. So currently tapping again into around 40k. Chopping around and just looking at the development. Not really seeing any buyers kicking in. So I kind of get a feeling that we're about to crush to the downside. And uh, attack all of these lows. Which is of course, yeah. Not, not not that and uh, which also made me think that sometimes i'm not really intraday trading uh this this sort of pairs uh but if you really think it's going down then start shorting it right i know a lot of you do but there is a short push pullback probably a short even right there but yes overall i'm just looking at this one on the daily and uh, still on the daily we are kind of bullish right this is the extreme that actually caused this huge push into the downside into the upside so right now we're heavily down though very nice bearish candles to the downside so let's see how it's going to respond from here if we start breaking below this zone then definitely i do think kind of these lows right there maybe even this low of 34 is going to get taken not to even say uh, this one so then we can return deeper into this range which is like 30k right and uh, then all of this for example is going to become a one big liquidity pool right uh for us to manipulate and then from there we can potentially explode right i really don't want to see a break below this one because then it's gonna be a drawdown right so uh, this is bitcoin for me so far just waiting to see something the full hourly time frame starting to show a little bit of a shift but this is definitely not enough so give it some time right ethereum right now it's kind of responding from this middle zone right there uh, on the daily so this was the last kind of rally based rally that broke structure into the highs but we're currently bearish also there is the daily lower high formation pullback so nothing too much to discuss on this one as well right we're still in the, within this range uh, i would love for it to tap in a little bit deeper to grab these lows right and then to potentially start showing me some bullishness uh, but of course uh, we know that the overall crypto market is right now bearish so uh, let's not expect too much, right? So my analysis still remains the same. Uh, if we have a pullback towards this one, I can consider shorts as well, driving into, into the lows. But if the full hourly time frame starts turning really bullish from there, I might be also interested for longs, right? So let's see. And again, the biggest tip is take your profits on crypto, right? If you're buying at the lows and the market gives you a nice uh, percentage increase, which in terms of percentages on crypto, bro, this is 43%. You don't get this on stocks. Right. So if you get such an increase, just take your profits and then reinvest them at a lower price. Right. So, guys, this is how I'm going to wrap up this weekly outlook. Hopefully it wasn't too long. Let me know if you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and make sure to subscribe, like the video to support the channel. And uh, yeah, let me give me your overall outlook for the market, for all the pairs that you trade. I'm always interested to hear your opinion. And if you're watching this on the weekend, we'll have an amazing one. Have a long weekend for Easter and uh, wishing you a very crushing week ahead of you. And see you on the Tuesday morning outlook on Telegram.